You may have heard of the country called Belarus, either from the 2020 protests to the border crisis with Poland or its involvement in the Russian invasion of Ukraine. You may be wondering, why does Belarus exist and how did it become a country? Before we find out how Belarus became a country, let's discuss what Belarus is first. So Belarus is a country in Eastern Europe, with its capital being Minsk, and it is sandwiched between Poland, Ukraine, Russia, Latvia, and Lithuania. It's a young nation, only becoming independent after the fall of the Soviet Union three decades ago. With around 9 million people, most of the population speak Russian and Belarusian, both being East Slavic languages. Even if it's a young nation, it has quite a history. The name Belarus comes from the term Belaya Rus, which generally translates to White Rus. It can mean either White Russia or White Ruthenia. The history of Belarus, precisely the history of the Belarusian ethnicity, started with the migration of the Slavic peoples throughout modern-day Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia assimilating the local Baltic and Finnic peoples. The Belarusian and Ukrainian lands also serve as trading corridors from Scandinavia to the Byzantine Empire. The proximity to the Byzantine Empire allowed most Slavic inhabitants to convert to Orthodox Christianity. Eventually, a new well-known entity emerged, the Kivan Rus. It is essentially a loose federation of small multi-ethnic principalities comprising much of modern-day Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. From within the Kievan Rus, a famous principality known as the Principality of Polotsk emerged within much of northern Belarus and parts of the Baltic states. During this period, the Belarusian lands developed and strengthened their Slavic Belarusian identity, which also marked a diverging point for Ukrainian and Russian identities. It was a significant foundation for Belarusian identity to persevere in the face of foreign rule. And then, foreign rule happened. In the 13th century, the Mongol Empire destroyed the Kievan Rus, leaving the vast territory up for grabs as the principalities splintered. The Grand Duchy of Lithuania swept in, incorporating much of the Ruthenian region through dynastic marriages and conquest. During this period, Ruthenian culture flourished along with its language. Ruthenians, nowadays Belarusians and Ukrainians, held some rights as ethnic Lithuanians were not the majority, although the seat of the Grand Duchy remains in Vilnius. The Union of Lublin in 1569 created the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, but almost the entire territory of modern-day Belarus remained under the jurisdiction of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Nevertheless, the area saw increased colonization. The period also saw increased internal and external conflicts, in which Ruthenia was deeply affected. Eventually, Poland-Lithuania was partitioned between Austria, Prussia, and Russia, and the latter took much of Ruthenia. As you may expect, the region saw intensive Russification. Despite this, the 20th century saw the resurgence of Belarusian national revival and the gradual rise of Belarusian nationalism. More Belarusians have become aware of their own identity instead of what the Russian emperor said. It culminated in the Belarusian participation in the 1863 to 1864 January uprising in which a Belarusian revolutionary named Konstantin Kalinovsky was one of the leaders. Still, the St. Petersburg government continued to suppress any idea of Belarusian identity, especially after the failed uprising. It contributed to the sizable Russian language demographic in today's Belarus, especially in the East. When World War I came, the Belarusian lands and identity would undergo a significant transformation. The Germans captured Minsk in February 1918, and shortly afterward, a puppet state known as the Belarusian Democratic Republic was proclaimed. During this period, Belarusian culture and language flourished, 
which was previously repressed by the Tsarist government. However, Germany lost World War I, and Belarusian territory was up for grabs. The Bolsheviks in the East eyed up and immediately swept in, establishing a Belarusian Soviet Republic, which later merged with the Lithuanian Soviet Republic. However, Poland had other plans, and it soon took Minsk in August 1919. The Bolsheviks counterattack but failed to defeat the Polish entirely. In the following Peace of Riga, the territories of the Belarusian Democratic Republic got partitioned between Poland and the USSR. The capital, Minsk, was assigned to the USSR, and a new Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic was formed. Belarus would eventually be enlarged internally, giving its modern-day Russia-Belarus border, while the Belarusian Soviet Republic is separate administratively from the Russian Soviet Republic, the region still saw Russification especially in terms of language. Many Belarusians also fell victim to Stalin's Great Purge. The Polish half of today's Belarus saw Polonization, but this would end when the Soviets invaded in 1939. All of Belarusian territory, including the today's Polish territory of Białystok, was annexed to the Belarusian Soviet Republic. During World War II, Belarus was occupied by the German forces. There was an attempt to establish a puppet government, but in reality, the Germans brutally repressed the Belarusian people, especially the Jews. There was an enormous Belarusian guerrilla movement that wreaked havoc on the German war effort. After the war, Belarus was destroyed. It lost a quarter of its pre-war population. Minsk and other cities were razed to the ground. Belarus would join the United Nations along with Ukraine and the Soviet Union itself. Belarus and Ukraine having their own seats in the UN while part of the USSR is due to Stalin's politicking as he refused to join the UN unless granted extra seats. Eventually, Belarus was rebuilt and became a major industrial center in the western portion of the USSR. Belarus became an independent country in 1991 after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. At first, Belarus had a democratic government with its flag being a white red white stripe. This lasted until Alexander Lukashenko's rise to power where he won every election after election after election. He suppressed political dissent ran as a dictator and assisted Russia in the invasion of Ukraine. To summarize, the history of Belarus is mainly rooted in the several principalities within the Kievan Rus, which nourishes the Ruthenian culture. This Ruthenian, specifically white Ruthenian identity, would eventually become today's Belarusian identity. Multiple empires have influenced Belarusian identity, such as the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, and the Russian Empire. Despite being under foreign rule for centuries, Belarusian culture and identity persevered, and Belarus briefly became independent after World War I. There is a significant Russian influence thanks to Belarus being under Russian rule for a long time. Today, Moscow continues to have a very strong relationship with Minsk, specifically the government of Lukashenko, as both are part of the so-called Union State. Belarus may look very similar to Russia, but Belarus has a different Belarusian language and identity, and they do have related cultures and histories. Belarus, being landlocked, indeed has been heavily influenced by its neighbors. Still. It exists as its neighbors had it fully assimilated the Belarusian population and culture into their own culture and identity. Even if the Belarusian identity is not as strong as Ukrainian or Polish identity. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more country neighbors.